Hello and welcome, I'm Dave. Today we will learn about loops in Python, and I'll provide links to all resources in the description below. I've got Visual Studio Code open. You can see I have a new folder for lesson eight over here in the file tree. Let's create a new file, and let's call this loops.py. From there, let's go ahead and press Control in the back tick to open a terminal window, and then let's go to View, and from there we'll go to Appearance, come down to Panel Position, and choose Right, so our terminal window is here at the right, and then I'm going to press Control B to hide the file tree, so we can see our code here on the left in Visual Studio Code, and we can see the output and everything we run at the terminal here in the right. So when we talk about loops in Python, we can talk about two different types of loops. There's a while loop and a for loop. Let's look at while loops first. And a while loop will execute a block of code while a condition is true. So let's create a basic while loop. Let me first set a value equal to one. And from here I can say while value is less than 10, and then we put a colon, and now we have a block of code inside of our while loop. Notice we're indented. So I'm going to print the value. And now we must increment the value to go ahead and make it greater than 10 at some point, or if not, or at least equal to 10, the way we have this current loop set, because if not, we will have an endless loop or an infinite loop. That could crash our computer, it would use up all the memory, and it would just go on forever, and we don't want that to happen. So let's go ahead and say value plus equal one. So now this is going to increment every time it goes through the loop, and it will eventually be equal to 10 or greater, and the loop will stop. So let's save our code. And from here, we'll use the drop and we'll choose run Python file. And you can see over here, now we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It doesn't get to 10 because this says while less than 10. So if we wanted to print the number 10, we would say while value less than or equal to 10. Now we can run this code again by clicking the play button and we get one through 10. So we have iterated through this loop 10 times. So it goes through the loop 10 times printing each number. Now we can stop a loop in another way besides uh, making this condition true, and that is using a break statement. So after this print value, let me go ahead and say if value equals five, so I'm putting an if statement in our loop, then I'm just typing the word break. And that break statement there will stop the loop when value is equal to five. So let's run the code again. And you can see we go one, two, three, four, five, because we print first. So we print the value of five before we get to the if statement. And then the loop stops. Now I want to keep this example in here for you. So I'm just going to highlight all of this, control C to copy, and then control and the slash to comment that loop out. And below it, I'm going to paste with control V. And now I'm going to show an example of the continue keyword. So instead of break, I'm going to say continue. This will stop this current loop where it's at and go to the next loop. But we have to be careful here once again. We have to think about where we're incrementing the value. If we continue here and skip to the next, then we're not incrementing that loop again. And that's important that we continue to increment that loop. At this point, it would be equal to five and it would just continue to be equal to five. So that's not what we want. We better increment our value before this if statement. And let's go ahead and print the value after the if statement. And so I'm just using control X to cut those and then control V to paste those. So cut instead of copy with control X and then control V to paste those values. But you can see I've rearranged what happens in the loop, but now this will skip to the next iteration when it equals five. So let's see what happens when we run our code. And you can see it starts at two because we don't print until we're down here. So we've got two through 11, and that's because we're adding one immediately once we get inside of the loop. But notice, we didn't print the number five, and that's because we used continue here, so it never gets to the print statement. It just goes to the next iteration of the loop. Now we can also add an else to our while loop, so I'm going to come down the line, bring the else over to the left where it's not indented, and then have a print here as well. So when do you think this else will occur? It should occur when the loop has completed, but not, note this, not if we use the break keyword. If we break the loop, the else will not execute. So only if the loop actually completes as it should, and this condition 
is no longer true, then the else will occur. So here I'm going to say value, oh, I need quotes, value is now equal to, now let's concat here with the plus symbol and then just put in our value. So I'll save this code and run it and let's see what we get. Oh, I tried to print an integer. I should have known better. We need to use the string constructor here and make this value a string because it's currently an integer. And now we can run the code again and it will work. So we have value is now equal to 11. Okay, I'm going to highlight and press control slash to comment out that loop as well. And let's move on to for loops. So let's make a basic for loop. A for loop iterates over a sequence and the sequence can be contents of a collection data type that we've gone over like lists, tuples, dictionaries, or sets, or it can even be the individual characters of a string. So I'm going to make a list first called names. And inside this list, I'll have Dave and Sarah and let's put in John as well. So we've got three names in our list, and now we can use a for loop to iterate over this list. So I'm going to say for x in names, and then inside the loop, we'll just print x. Now note, I'm using x here, but I could say for name in names. I could use any word or letter, just some type of character is essentially what I'm doing to represent each value in the list as it iterates through the for loop. So we'll save and run our code. You can see we get Dave, Sarah, and John all printed here in our output in the terminal. So now I'm going to scroll up just a little bit and let's create another for loop. As I said, you can go through each character in a string. So what if I said for X in Mississippi? That is a long word that most of us here, at least in the United States, learn how to spell in school and we memorize M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I because it's a long one. And after this, we'll run the code and we should see each individual letter on its own line because we printed one letter of the word Mississippi each time the loop iterated. Okay, I'm going to comment these two out, but I'm going to leave our names list above. And then let's go back to this names list and let's iterate through once again. So I'll say 4x in names. And then inside the loop, I'm going to say if x equals Sarah, then, oh yeah, I need my colon there. Then I'm going to use the keyword break once again, but I'm going to print X. So what do you think the output of this loop will be? Let's find out, I'll run the code and it's just Dave. So when X equals Sarah, the loop stops with the break keyword and notice the print statement was after the break. So it only printed Dave before it actually stopped the loop and stopped printing. So now I'm going to copy this once again, highlight control C to copy and come down control V to paste. And I will highlight this and control slash to comment it all out. But I'm going to switch the break keyword to continue here. Now let's think about what the output will be. What do you think will happen at this point? Remember continue stops the current iteration and just goes to the next one in the loop. So let's run our code. And you can see we get Dave and John, and that's because when X equals Sarah, it continues and it skips this print statement and it just goes to the next iteration of the loop, which prints John. Okay, scrolling for some more room again, I will comment this loop out. And from here, we're going to look at ranges because we can have a for loop that iterates through a range. So I'm going to say four X in range, and then I need to provide a number. I almost forgot to do that. Let's just put the number four here. And after that, we'll say print X. So now we're going to go through a range of numbers, but notice what the starting number is when I run our code. It's zero, just like the index in a list. So zero, one, two, three, even though we said we want a range of four numbers, it starts at zero. However, I'm going to copy this down by highlighting both and then shift alt and the down arrow would also work to copy down. And from there, I'm going to say start at two and then have a range of four or stop at four essentially. So it won't necessarily be four numbers. We're still saying when to stop. Now we're also saying when to start. And just to avoid any confusion, I will comment this out. Let's save and run the code and see what we get. We get the numbers two and three because we started at two and we said stop at four. And just like above when we said four, it didn't use the number four. 
it actually stopped there. So we started at zero and we got four numbers, but what if we had put in say five, for example, let me change this. And now we say a range of five numbers we run, it should be zero to four. So you see how that works. Let me switch this back to two and four. So it's going to include the number that you start on, but it's not going to include the number that you stop on. Now there's one more thing we can do with ranges. So I'll once again, shift alt and the down arrow to copy this down and I'll comment out the loop above it. But the thing we can do with a range that we haven't accomplished yet is actually telling it how to increment instead of ones, which is the default here, you saw that it went through by zero, one, two, three, four, and et cetera. We can actually tell it to say, okay, start at zero, go through the number 100 or up to the number 100, but increment by fives instead of by ones. So now when we run our loop, we count from zero all the way up to 95. Remember, it will not include the number we stop at. So if we actually wanted the number five to be the beginning number, we could start at the number five, and we would want to make sure our number was higher than 100 if we wanted to include the number 100. So now when we run our code, it starts at five, and it ends at the number 100 because it increments by fives. Now, just like we discovered with a while loop, we can also have an else statement with a for loop. So I'm going to add an else here at the end. And at the very end, I'll just print and I'll say, glad that's over. Now I need an apostrophe S, so I need to escape the apostrophe. And that's with that slash. And then I'll say that's over. Save, and so now our loop should run, and at the very end, we get glad that's over. Okay, just to visualize our names list, once again, I'm going to copy it and just bring it back down here to where we can see it. And after that, I'm going to create another list, and I'm going to call this list actions. And inside the list, I'm going to have codes, and I'm going to have eats, and I'm going to have sleeps. And the reason I want two lists here is because we're going to look at using a nested loop. So we're going to loop through two different lists and I'll just bring those to the top. Now let's look at how we could do this. So the first thing we wanna have is for, and I'll use name in names. So for each name, we're going to do something. Now the next loop is going to be inside this first for loop. So for Dave, then we're going to loop through all of the actions. So I'll say for action in actions. And now I want to print and I'll say name plus, and then I'll give a space here, another plus, and then action, and then one more plus to concat a period at the very end of the statement. So what do you think the output of this nested loop situation will be? What I should get is Dave codes, Dave eats, Dave sleeps, and then we'll get the same for Sarah and the same for John. Let's see if we get what we expect. That is what we get. So we get three statements about Dave, then three statements about Sarah, and then three statements about John. And that's because name is in the outer loop. So it goes through the name and then it loops for every action for that specific name before it moves on to the next name. So let's go ahead and copy this down. I'll highlight it all, shift alt and the down arrow, and then I'll put a space between and let me comment out this loop. And let's go ahead and switch this around. So here I want for, I press control D to highlight both names and I can type action. Then here I'm going to highlight action and press control D and I'll put in name. So now I've got the action on the outside and the name on the inside. So let's think about what we expect to get now. We should get Dave codes, then Sarah codes, then John codes, because the actions are on the outside. So it's going to apply code to each of the names before it moves on to the next action. So let's go ahead and run this and confirm our expectations. And that is what we get, Dave codes, Sarah codes, John codes. Then we get Dave eats, Sarah eats, John eats. So whatever is on the outside 
is what happens and it loops through for whatever is on the inside. So play around with this if it's hard to understand because nested loops can be a little hard to wrap your head around at first. But after you get the hang of it, I think they will make sense. And of course, a natural question would be, can you even have more nested loops inside? Yes, you could. And of course, you need to understand how two loops work together before you start adding more loops in there. But go ahead and experiment and it will help you understand how nested loops work. Okay, now I'd like to take a little time today to apply just a little bit of what we've learned about loops to improve our rock, paper, scissors game from lesson five. So let's go ahead and open the file tree again. Now in your file tree, oh, press control B to do that. In your file tree, maybe you've got all of your different lessons in one folder where you've still got the rps.py file. If you have that, great. If not, you might wanna open it up and use it for the rest of this lesson. I'm going to create a new file over here, once again named RPS, but I'll put the number two after it. So this is the second version of our rock, paper, scissors game. Also over here in the terminal, I'm going to type clear just to clear all of that out for now. Now I'll hide the file tree again because we want all of this room and I'm pasting in our original code from lesson five. And this is our rock, paper, scissors game but we want to add a loop to our game so we can play again and again without having to restart the code. So to do this, underneath our enum here, I'm going to add an extra line or two, and then I'm going to define a variable saying play again, and I'm going to set this just equal to true. So a while loop doesn't have to have an equal sign. We can just say while play again, and this means while play again is true. If play again is ever false, then the while loop will stop. But note, indentation is important in Python. So after I start a while loop here, I need to select everything else. And I mean everything. So I'm starting to highlight here and then I scroll down, hold down the shift key and click. So it highlights everything and press the tab key. So we need that indentation to say, yes, all of this code is inside the loop. And I can see I still have a typo here. I have play gain instead of play again, and I want play again for my variable. So let's go ahead and make sure that the type is the same here. So play again is the variable, and while it is true, we're going to loop through our code. Now I don't need those extra spaces here, but we do have to consider how to stop our loop because right now, play again will always be true. So we would have an endless loop. Let's scroll down to the bottom of our code where after we have determined who the winner is and we can add just a little more and remember to indent so it's part of the loop. Here I'm going to say play again is going to equal input. So we're going to get some more input from the user and here I'm going to say slash in because I want a new line instead of printing a blank line. Oh, I need quotes first and then slash in and then I'm going to say play again with a question mark Go ahead and put a space and another slash in so the next part appears on another line and I'll say Y or yes or and then another slash in for a new line. And then I'll say Q to quit. Not quite, but quit. And then two lines. So slash in slash in. I'm also going to press Alt Z so this wraps down and we can see all of the code at once. And now we just need a logical if statement to handle this. So after we get our play again input, we'll say if play again dot lower, which will take the Y if the user does not enter a capital Y, it would make it lowercase, or if they do enter a capital Y, I should say it'll make it lowercase. So either way, we only need to check a lowercase after we use our lower method here. So if play again dot lower equals y, then we know we want to play again. So we can just continue our loop and go to the next iteration. But else, let's go ahead and print a kind of thank you message for playing. So let's print. And inside of this, I'm going to press my Windows key and a period. You may be on a Mac or Linux that has a different way of getting emojis, but that's how I do it here. Then I'm going to start to type celebrate so I can bring up a little celebration emoji and I'm going to put it in here several times. There we go. I can remove the hands. That was a mistake. Or if you want the hands, that's fine too. I also want to put another slash in in front of this so I have another line break before it starts. After that, I'm going to print one more line 
And in this line, I'll say, thank you for playing, an exclamation mark, and then another new line character. And after that, we could end our loop in a couple of different ways. One, we could say play again equals false. That should end the loop. But also, we could use a break. Either one would work. So just so you know, if you were thinking break, nothing wrong with that. I can leave break here commented, but I don't think I will because play again equals false would work. So let's just do that. And mental note, break would work if that's how you wanted to end the loop as well. After that, let's go ahead and put a message at the very end of the program. So we'll use that sys exit again, as we did above in the program. And I'll just say bye. I'm going to use one more emoji here, and I want my wave emoji, little hand. So a goodbye message there. So now we've pretty much put our whole game in a loop, and we can continue playing it over and over again. One thing you might notice, I used these slash ends instead of some of these empty lines here. So we could consider refactoring our code to remove any of these. Let's see how many we have. We can highlight what we have here, and then I can control F. And it looks like we have three of them in our code. So let's remove this first one. And when we remove that, then we wanna make sure to put in a slash in when our string begins. Okay, let's go to the next one. It's right here before the player choice statement. So we'll put a slash in there and then we can remove that one. And then we have one after as well. So if it's always after this, the place to put it would be at the end of the statement above. And then we can remove it as well. And now we've also refactored our code to be just a little bit more efficient. And we'll close that out. Control S to save. And let's play our game and see if it all works as expected. So now we can choose, I'll say one for rock, and we won. And it asks us, play again, Y for yes, or Q for quit. Well, we really know they don't have to put Q for quit. Anything that's not a Y will actually quit the game. So for example, I could put in an A and check. Yes, thank you for playing, bye. So let's run the code again. This time, I'll choose rock once again. And we had a tie game. I'm going to choose Y so I can continue playing. And I'll just put in a lowercase Y and we continue playing. Rock and Python one. Now I'll put in an uppercase Y and enter. Yes, we're still playing. So now I'm going to say two for paper, tie game. So lowercase Y and let's choose one for rock, Python one again. So now I'm ready to quit. So let's just press Q. And yep, that works too. Thank you for playing. Goodbye. Once again, our game's not perfect yet, but we have improved it. So this shows you how to apply some of the things we've learned as we continue, and we'll apply much more with some small projects and keep improving this game too as we go. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection, and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you, and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day and let's write more code together very soon.